Good Lord, what is happening in there? Aurora Borealis? Uh, Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen. Yes. May I see it? You know, I was expecting personalised audio files, or, you know, something funny, a jokey, but what I got was memes, so thank you. Starting off this week, the Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2 has successfully landed on the asteroid Ryugu. The craft will eventually collect samples of the asteroid by firing a tantalum bullet into it, and delivering this sample back to Earth. In addition, some of the sample would have been picked up by a sampler horn on impact. The landing itself was to be considered a risky one as the area around the landing zone was rather rocky and uneven, but Hayabusa 2 pulled it off. The world's biggest species of bee, thought to be lost to science in 1981, has been found on an Indonesian island. The species, called Wallace's giant bee after British explorer Alfred Russell Wallace, has an estimated wingspan of 6 centimetres and depends on lowland forest for resin and to feed on termites in the trees. Starting off the paleontology news this week, there's been a new tyrannosaur named. Welcome Moros Intrepidus, the intrepid embodiment of impending doom. Lovely. Extending our record of tyrannosauroids in the Cretaceous North America back around 15 million years, this new species has shed light on how these creatures went from small, cursorial animals to the giants like T-Rex. We won't say too much about Moros here though, since this Sunday's video is going to be all about it. A new study was published recently that has examined the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction, the one famous for wiping out non-avian dinosaurs. The Chicxulub impact is not the only event thought to be responsible for the extinction, but also the eruption of massive amounts of lava at the Deccan Traps in India. This study has precisely dated the eruptions, finding them to have occurred within 50,000 years of the asteroid impact, suggesting the impact renewed the lava flows. They also found that three quarters of the lava erupted after the impact, contradicting previous estimates that 80% of lava extruded before it. Next up, a study has examined the spine of a Neanderthal specimen known as the La Chapelle Saints 1 skeleton, and virtually reconstructed it. The researchers found that instead of the former thinking that Neanderthals had flatter lower backs with less of a spinal curve than modern humans, these close relatives did actually have lower back and neck curvature similar to our own. Therefore, Neanderthals seem to again be even more human-like than we previously thought. Also this week, a paper has been published in the American Geophysical Union that estimates that as soon as the year 2159, the total amount of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere will reach the levels released during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum 56 million years ago. This is only about four generations away, which is pretty terrifying, and so by studying the effects that the PTEM had on evolution and environments in the past, we will hopefully be able to get some sort of sense of what we may be facing in the future. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science, I do hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.